Welcome back, you're watching Late Night Live. Tonight I've been talking to Nick Buckley, he's the founder of the charity Mancunian Way here in Manchester, as you might have guessed. <laughs> uh, Nick, we were just talking about those uh, 2011 riots just mm. in the break. Um, it's just, it's very interesting just to kind of, you, you know, hear your take on it as you were right bang in the center mm. of them really, weren't you? You happened to be based there at the time, but you were saying you feel like that probably wouldn't happen in that way again. No, uh, it wouldn't happen. Um, no, not like that. Um, the Manchester riots in the city centre were building up over four, five, six hours that day. Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of young people in groups coming around, hoods going up, yeah. uh, collars going up, and they were standing around for hours and hours, and more of them were turning up and turning up. And the police um, at that point were saying, nothing we can do. They're doing nothing wrong, there's nothing we can do. And everybody was just waiting. The whole atmosphere in the city centre, I I about, here, I about half past three, four o'clock, really started changing. Shops shut a couple of hours early. People were got sent home. You could really feel it in the city centre. Um, and the police didn't react until the problem started. Um, I don't criticise the police for that, because on the flip side, the Their police would have gone in hard straight away when nothing's happened. The public would have screamed and shouted police brutality yeah, of course. And they were just stood there doing nothing yeah. but once the riots started it was all too late then um the police learned a lot that day um and something like that I'm not saying we'd now have another riot again but you would never have it the same way it happens in 2011. so you feel like we at least we've come away and learned something from that mm. and and of course the the very very positive thing mm. to come out of the whole thing was mancunian way mm. which is your charity um so let's let's talk about like sort of a typical mancunian way day for you for example um do you do kind of a nine to five i imagine you're kind of probably doing all funny hours my day now is really really boring is it uh, my my job now is sat behind a desk admin admin <laughs> finances admin applying for grants right uh, writing reports on projects that are finished evaluating projects linking in with partners, making referrals to children's services or safeguarding issues, managing staff. My job isn't the job I wanted four years ago when I set Mancunion way up. But do you know what? Someone has to do it. There's no getting away from the admins. Like you, ha you, know, you, have to, yeah. you have to tie up your loose ends, don't you? So my, my job's not worth talking about, but the charity itself, yeah. on a daily basis, every day is different. So um, on the weekends, so maybe Friday night, Saturdays, we're working in the city centre. Uh, we've got a project called Stay Safe, which is about um, trying to protect young people. So it's about child sexual exploitation. Um, so Friday nights, we're patrolling the city centre, looking for young people to look out of place. And if you come across, you know, nine, nine o'clock on a Friday night, you come across a 13 year old girl, she needs speaking to. And not only that, the police need phoning to say, 13 year old girl here in Manchester City Centre on her own. You know, she's waiting to become a victim. So yeah. the police need to get out now before she becomes a victim of something. Yeah. Um, and on Saturday afternoons, we work around Cathedral Gardens and Urbis. Um, we have lots of young people who, who, who gather there, have been doing that for about 15 years, uh, these young people. Um, and they, some of them, you know, involved in drugs or involved in drinking. A lot of legal high use now in the city centre. Mm. So we work with them about educating about how to keep yourself safe. Uh, we can't stop them doing what they're doing, but what we can do is reduce their risk of harm. So it's about saying to people, if she's going to get legless, you four need to watch her mm. and you four need to be responsible for her because if you let her go and let her walk away and walk down the side of the canal and she falls in or she's going to get mugged or she's going to get abused. So you four need to take responsibility. So educating them on how to look after themselves, look after their friends, not lack like of weekends. Um, and then during a the week, we run a couple of youth clubs in Gorton at Cedar Mount Academy, which is a fantastic school. We're doing a lot of work with them now. Um, run some youth clubs, some garden clubs. Um, we do a lot of work in the local parks in Manchester, especially East Manchester. Um, football, all sorts of fun stuff. Egg and spoon race, three-legged race sometimes, dog go wall. Like a school sports day. Exactly. Yeah, we try to do different things they can't do yeah. when we're not there. Yeah. You all can play football all the time. So um, on a traditional week, that, you know, it's, it's that sort of work. It's different. Um, so do you find that, uh, well, obviously you're relying on volunteers uh, a lot for a lot of your work. Do you, but do you, mm -hmm. you, must, you must need some kind of expert, um, like I said, social work or counselling background, some of your full-time staff. Do you have somebody like that on board or? No, uh, what we try to do is what we're good at. And yeah. what we're good at is engagement. Right. What we're good at is speaking to people who don't want to be spoken to. 
What we're good at is breaking down barriers with groups of young people and, and building trust with them. I have to go about that, um, Nick, because I always find, like, mm -hmm. I always feel, you know, your average gang of teenagers, I mean, and it doesn't matter what age you are, you're an adult in the world, I think that people, especially if it's, you know, in a certain, you know, maybe an area, or that the kind of the hoodie, the, mm -hmm. this idea of the hoodie, you know, we've, we've, they've banned them in certain, like, shopping, shopping centres and that kind of thing. Um, it can be quite intimidating to approach a group of modern mm -hmm. teenagers, I think, today. So how do you, how do you break down that barrier? Simply, it yeah. can be intimidating to somebody who doesn't work with young people. Young people are young people. They're the same yeah. as when me and you were younger, same yeah. 100 years ago. Young people aren't these new feral youths that are all carrying knives and guns. and That's, just, a, that's just a press. There is a lot of hysteria and kind of reporting about that. Kind of, yeah. Young people are young people. They may have hoodies up, they may look a bit intimidating, but they're just kids. Mm. Why should we be afraid of kids? We need, their, we need, their, we need to protect them not be scared of them. So once you've got over that initial fear, then it's all about how good you are at engagement. When I'm taking on a new member staff of a new volunteer, I can tell usually within 30 seconds of them walking in my office if I'm going to want them. Right. Because within 30 seconds, I know if, the, if I can help them get better, but they need to have that spark. They need good eye contact. They need able to be dead chatty and friendly, cracking jokes, because you've got a couple of seconds walking up to a group of yous to have them laughing. You need to break that ice and get them laughing and comment on someone's shoes. Be daft, be silly to a certain extent. Yeah. And try to be genuine of who you are. You can't copy the person who thinks better than you because then you just come across false. So relying on your skills, but you need good engagement skills. And you also need to be yourself. I imagine if you go in there, I mean, they're, they're just going to call you on it straight away if you go in there trying to be all, you know, yeah. down with the young folk or yeah. too hip to be cool, to be true. Um, you, I imagine that there'd be a certain amount of disillusionment you come up against because obviously anyone who goes into a charity, they go into, you know, with an open heart probably and like, with, you know, ideals. Mm. Um, but ultimately you are facing a lot of, mm. as I said, closed doors, barriers, and even just from the kids themselves who are actively trying to help. So. I imagine it's, not, it's probably not for everybody, really. Would it be, or, or can you train yourself to, can you harden yourself towards those kind of um, event, episodes? No, you can't harden yourself. Um, and to a certain extent, that's my job. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want staff who are too hard and too closed because they're not going to do anything. But yet you don't want your staff too open and too vulnerable because then they go home at night crying about little Jimmy. Because he's going back to his crackhead mum. Yeah. And there's nothing yeah. anyone can do. Social services know about it, and, and but there's nothing you can do. And staff say to me, so I just want to take him home. Yeah. I just want to take her home. And part of my job is to make them understand the limitations of what we can do. Um, and also make them see, even if it's only a tiny benefit, but what that benefit is for little Jimmy, um, rather than staff going home and... And it can really mess you up inside. Yeah, that's certainly because I know. I think even like with teachers, I know. Um, you know, I have a very good friend who's a teacher, and she'd say, you know, mm. there'll be that one child in the class. You know, maybe they're just simply not getting the encouragement they should get at mm. home, or you know, they come into school, they're a bit tired. Nobody's mm. watching what time they go to bed. They're small kids, you know, mm. you know, eight or nine or whatever. Um, and it would, be, it would be so hard just to distance yourself or just to continue doing what well, at least I'm doing my bit. Mm. At least what I'm doing, I'm bringing as much good as I can to the child's life. I, I imagine that that's, uh, can, can you even can you teach that to everybody or can you train everybody that surely there's probably just people who just aren't suited to working in this kind of area. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, think? there's absolutely uh, people who are not suited, uh, but the people who are suited still have issues about those things you've talked about because it pulls on the heartstrings. Yeah. And um, so they need to be professional, but also caring. Um, if you care too much, then don't you, you're not professional anymore. Yeah. And that's where mistakes can happen. And that's when uh, you're not doing the best for that child. So you need to be professional and caring. It's a balancing act. Yeah. And every incident and every child, you've got to balance it differently. There isn't a perfect balance. So you've got to treat every case as a separate case and work out what is that balance and what's the best for that child. And obviously the practicalities of it are that, you know, as soon as you kind of lose sight for emotional reasons or whatever, mm. well, then the charity's going to suffer, isn't it? Um, you know, your work is going to suffer possibly. Well, that possibly, but, but I wouldn't care about that. Yeah. Who would suffer would be the young people would and the child. The yeah. That's the person who's going to suffer if that worker loses sight of what they're trying to do. Yeah. And everything we do is always about the young people come first. The well-being and the safeguarding and the 
promotion and the development of young people always comes first, not the charity. Yeah. I didn't set up just to run a charity. Yeah. And what kind of support do you have then from the local areas? The, I don't know, the businesses or just people getting mm. volunteering their services, their time, or, you know, just, mm. just simply be feeling a feeling that, you know, they're glad you're there. In one word, lots. Really? Lots. That's, so that's I can give you some really good example. Too, you know, we have volunteers who, um, who give us their skills. So these, some of these volunteers aren't people who go out and work with us with face to face with young people but they volunteer in other ways. We have a young lady who does all our social media, so she's Facebooking and um, tweeting and stuff like that all the time, sending messages out about what we're doing and pictures. Because um, people forget that they can volunteer in different ways. Exactly, okay, they can exactly. Maybe you need an electrician work or something. Yeah. Right? Well, you, we have another two volunteers who do all our editing. We make lots of films with young people um, and they edit the films. Um, we've got another volunteer. Um, she's left now, but she spent a year and a half doing our admin. Um, so we've got volunteers like that, um, but then we've also got people helping us like businesses. We talked about that before, Virgin yeah. Trains, the Hilton. Um, we've been, luckily, recently, we've been getting some um, financial donations of some businesses now, which is really helpful. Um, we had a ladies lunch in the city centre for business ladies a couple of months ago, and we were the charity of choice for that afternoon, and they raised £4,000 for us. Wow. Um, and on the back of that, we're now in discussion with another business, who's looking at sponsoring one of our members of staff potentially for three years. Um, so this, there's other help and support coming in now as well. And, so, it, and it is a constant thing which I think people need to be aware of, isn't it, to keep it afloat, it is yeah. a charity at the end of the day. Uh, Nick, that's all we have time for, but you've been a brilliant guest, I have to say. And Mancunia Way, if people do want to support you, mm -hmm. or they want to donate, or they want to get involved, how can they get in touch? Just go on the website, if you Google Mancunia Way Charity, we're top of the list. Mancunia Way, make sure to put in charge, otherwise yeah. you're just going to see that sink. About the big hole in the motorway. <laughs> Mancunia Way Charity. <laughs> no, Mancunia Way Charity. Nick, thanks very, very much. You're welcome. As Nick Buckley from Mancunia Way. Uh, we have to go for a break now, but we'll be back in about three minutes, and Polly and Guy will be back discussing the day's news. Don't go away.